Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Taylor Wilde. Welcome back to Wild On Season 4, the podcast where you get the insider's view of the weird, wonderful, wild world of wrestling. On Wednesdays, today's guest is a real-life Wonder Woman. She's a mom of three, an academic, a tomboy, yet super femme, bare-knuckle sweetheart. Ladies and gentlemen, my girl, Teresa Sweetheart. It's so nice to meet you. I've been following your career for a while. It's been crazy, especially the last year. <laughs> the last year and a half gone by I, so quick. I feel like your career has exploded in the pandemic or just off the back of it. Oh, yeah. 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 So, like, before I was like, okay, how much longer am I going to do this? Let's see it where it goes. Because, like, MMA, it's one of those that, when I first started was mm -hmm. a thing where they were like, oh, girls, it's exploding for girls. It's going to be so easy, but right. it really wasn't. It was hard um, it. to make it. I was just happy when I got into like Combate because they were a bigger organization. Yep. So when I couldn't, um, when pandemic hit and I couldn't fight, like it was a blessing in disguise, even though I wanted to keep going because yeah. BKFC hit me up and I was like, first I was like, I don't know. And then my coach was like, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> it was fun. I love it. So what's been the biggest change for you going into oh. the bare knuckle fighting world? So the biggest change is actually the training because now it's like, so when I was just doing jujitsu, like you could just focus on just that. But then with MMA, you have to do jujitsu, Muay Thai, wrestling, like everything, boxing, you sort of did everything. And now it's like you can just really master the craft of just boxing, which bare, BKFC, bare knuckle is not boxing and it, I mean it's its own sports a little bit different yeah. um, and I think a lot of people don't understand that they're like it's just boxing without gloves it really isn't the way they do it it makes you like push the pace it makes you go out and like just the brawler comes out and everybody even yeah. if you don't want it to <laughs> but I've always been that way regardless I would always be the one because I, I was like I have to prove myself I'm always like the smallest one in the room mm -hmm. I'm a girl you're in a man's sport as it is so it's like I think I always like oh I'm, I'm going I'm going hard <laughs> good for you you know I I hate to you know, kind of sexualize the sport in any way, but there's a lot of beautiful fighters. Uh, and, you know, coming from the world of professional wrestling where, you know, your look as is as important, if not sometimes more important than your actual skill set. But I bet a lot of people have a hard time believing that you are an MMA or bare knuckle fighter because you're just, you're so femme. <laughs> oh, 100%. And, you know, BKFC is smart about their marketing. They knew they were going to grow. They, they knew what they needed to do because their audience is that 18-year-old male, the 20-year-old males. So they knew, like, I mean, every woman is in, like, we want everybody in there. I want more women. I don't care what you look like. But sure. if you get them in the door and you get as many eyes as possible, that's what they got to do. And for me, it's like one of those things you just know going into any of those entertainment yes that has even though it's not like the most important thing it's pretty important to get you just talked about like oh did you see this girl right and like for me i don't i grew i'm i'm a i was born in the 80s so like the yes, 90s girl. area that you know like that's what it was growing yes. up now it's completely different people yep. have a little bit more to say about it but i'm like it's normal to me <laughs> and no, i same I like to be the one that's the the GI Jane type of girl where like freaking Debbie Moore was hot like you know totally. they're badass like <laughs> I want, I totally want to be that like my my um, my models growing up were like Wonder Woman freaking uh, Black Widow those are the girls that I love because they were <gasps> strong so as hell yeah super feminine and pretty. <laughs> Yep. And don't forget like Pamela Anderson because yes. Homegirl did some stuff for us, like take away our eyebrows oh, yes. and make us real blonde. <laughs> that's why I had like that's why I had to go get my microblade. <laughs> Damn it, Pamela. And Angelina Dolly too. Angelina, <laughs> another one. Yeah. Gwen Stefani was another one for yes. me. Just just yes. like one line of hair. Just <laughs> Hundred percent, and then we all wanted to be blonde. <laughs> yeah, real bl as blonde as we could, like until our hair fell out. <laughs> yes, yes, hundred <laughs> percent. So, what got you into the sport of being a fighter, be it jujitsu, boxing, whatever it is? What made you a fighter? 
I've always been that girl that just likes to play with the boys and likes to do all it. If they told me I couldn't do something because I was a girl, it was sort of my head even when I was little, like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm sorry if I can't cuss. <laughs> oh, no. I would always this is a okay. cussing friendly podcast. Cuss away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but totally. I was just like, oh, yeah, you aren't going to tell me what I can and can't do. And I think that's something that I've always, like, instilled even in my kids. Like, yeah. Sort of what I want, like, the, my whole point is I don't care what you think you have going against you, like, you can do it. Like, yep. <laughs> I always help my daughter, my oldest, she's 20, and she <gasps> hated- a 20-year-old? Yeah, my kids, <laughs> yes. My wow. o- youngest is 14, I have a 16, uh, 16-year-old 16 son, he just turned 16 a uh, couple days ago, and then my oldest is 20, almost 21. I uh, always thought you were a babe, but like, girl. <laughs> Oh, Good it's for hard. you. <laughs> I was like, honestly, having her, I would think I would look a lot older because she adds so much stress to my life. But I love my kids. But y'all know. <laughs> Especially when it. your first one is a girl. Oh. <laughs> I only have a little guy. And he's, he's you know, the boys love their mamas, but they, they yes. just, they don't stop moving. Ever. No. No. <laughs> no. My, my son was amazing. I was blessed. I think they saw my oldest yeah and so my my younger two sort of i think we're like i'm not gonna get in as much trouble as her so i'm gonna be a little bit better but i go to two schools i'm uh next semester i'll finally have my bachelor's for king theology it took me forever to figure out what i wanted to do so that's why it's taking me so long but congratulations so I would tell her I do that. I, I was working 40 hours a week. I was training. I was fighting. So I was, she, she hates it. But at the same time, it's like I want to instill that in them. Like, yep. don't take anybody telling you you can't do them, something. Because if you really want to do it, you'll find a way. And if Absolutely. it's not that important, then it's not that important. And if you couldn't do it, figure it out later. Are you single mom? <laughs> yes. Oh, solidarity, sister. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I love my kids. I was, I'll do anything for them. So Same. I think kids give you energy and give you life and love in ways that you, you couldn't have done on your own. Pushes you to a whole new level. Almost 100% of the time. Heck yeah. <laughs> Until I get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> when you get those principal calls. Actually, my, my youngest are amazing. My oldest is the one that would get the calls about all the time. Not to go into the damn office. Oh, no. But <laughs> other than that, you know. They're, they're amazing. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. What do they think about their mama fighting? They they actually love it. My, yeah. my youngest was just telling me, Mom, you have a lot of views on your videos on YouTube. <laughs> they're not my videos, but they're the fighting videos. Of I mean, course. She was like literally going through and counting how many views were on each one. I just laughed. I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's got to be really inspiring for them, though. That's amazing. I, yeah, I like it. I go back and I'm like, hey, it's all about, I guess, legacy for the next generation. I did, For me, I didn't have, like, my parents did what they needed to do, but I yep. didn't have that person. I wasn't really close to them. So I just want my kids to have that because I didn't have it and I wish I did. Yeah. Like, I had looked up to, like, my aunts or, like, a co- okay. like some family members. So it was yep. like, I want my kids to be, like, proud of me. You know, we all are sort of proud of our parents, but I, I just want them to have that extra, like, this is what mom, my mom did or like Aww. their kids would be like, look, my grandma was cool. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that part of spirituality, though, like learning yeah. how to reparent yourself, heal your wounds through your uh-huh. children and try to not damage them too much along the way. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. So I find a lot of fighters, uh, you know, be it MMA, bare knuckle, professional wrestlers, we have this side of us that is, you know, crazy. That, you know, we want to fight and we've got lots to put out there. But at the same time, you can't go full tilt all the time or you'll burn out. So they have this really amazing like yin to yang. They have this spiritual side of them or maybe they don't call it spiritual. Maybe they call it something else. But do you see, uh, do you have that side of yourself where do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you like crystals, tarot, stuff like that? Mine's more meditating. I've always loved like the crystals and all that stuff but I okay. never got into it I actually have some of the girls I used to train with that do it and I totally want to do it but I was like have time. I gotta make some time for myself sometimes yeah there's not enough hours <laughs> but, in the day I get it but that's all that's all it is but I actually do I always loved um all like especially the crystals my mom was always she wasn't like super into it but she yeah. had like the the wax warmers and the incense and oh, like she would okay. bring stuff home like I 
I'm more, I'll read the horoscopes and do stuff like that. Yes. I'll watch my friend because she does card pulls and she goes to um, Peru a lot. She does those uh, trips out there where they, yeah. they do the ayahuasca and then yeah. they do other stuff. But it's like that spiritual. And I'm like, one day I'm going to go because it seems so cool. And she became... Um, I forget what kind of healer it is, but she became one of those. It has to do with um, energy, the death. No, well, more like oh, the, the death dead. healing. Yeah, I forget oh. what it's called. Is but she like a death doula or yeah, something like that? But it's okay. not. That's not the name. But it's similar. Oh, but, interesting. Yeah, but it, so I watch her little journey. And I'm like, I'm jealous. <laughs> but I was like, one day I'll have the time and I'll actually do it for myself. But you know, each of us are at different places. So for me, it's just meditating because like I said I'm still in school like this is final this is final week for me and I was just going I swear I have like 20 extra gray hairs right oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was so stressed I, I don't know if you've ever had to do uh <laughs> freaking group presentations oh, but you have those partners time. that just uh yeah that was my week <laughs> Isn't that funny, though, because you can perform and fight in front of mm -hmm. thousands of people, but you have a classroom of 40 and you're like, oh, dear God. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that. So my problem is the standing up. It's the group members that you're with not doing their part. Oh, OK. I actually find it a little bit easier as long as I know what the hell I'm talking about. Like, okay. it, it's like because it's kinesiology when it was like I had that stupid speech class and you had to make <laughs> dumb speeches about stuff you didn't even care about. Like, OK, I can't do this. I would get nervous as hell <laughs> yeah that's that's fair <laughs> but another step I'm good good for you oh man so how do you how do you keep this balance how do you stay grounded you're a student you're a fighter you're a mom of three like how do you do it I don't think <laughs> just go I sometimes feel like I have to be the energizer buddy like okay just just keep going <laughs> Go Amazing. and just keep moving door. What is it, Dory? Yeah. <laughs> just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> <laughs> That's seriously my motto right now. So yeah, I just, I honestly just don't think about it because when I start thinking about it, it stresses me out a little bit more because I'm like, sure. oh, shoot. Like, how am I doing this? Especially when, so I was so motivated to get into my bachelor's program that okay. I was going to, I still go to two schools, but I'm not as crazy, but I was doing both of, I had over 12 units at both so I was doing like double full-time and that and I, I did it and I got I think one C everything else was A's and B's and I sat there I was like okay I just I gotta keep moving I had like no time I was staying up every day to like one two o'clock in the morning uh having to wake up at like five six in the morning to go to work at the time and I was I was just like I don't know what I'm doing with my life if I stop and think about it I'm gonna cry and I think about it now it's like I don't know how the hell I did it seriously <laughs> but I did it but I did it and it was totally that okay one at a time instead of like thinking about what's next it was just yeah. like okay just get what you need to get done now once that's done it'll feel better you're gonna have something else next week but you only have less weeks now because it started with 16 now you have 15. I guess <laughs> that it's that right oh yeah <laughs> I guess it's that age old, like the more you do, the more you can do. Yes. And yes. then as soon as you stop, you're like, okay, I'm done. That's it. Yeah. yeah I, I will never do that again. <laughs> but I was like, I am not taking, because at the time I was, you know, I'm, I'm like not the youngest person in the class. And so mm. I was like, I am not taking two years. I'm getting this done in less than a year so I can get to my bachelor because I changed my major like four times. Okay. And so I was so far behind. I was like, okay. So I did it and I was able to get to the university I'm at now and I still take my college classes because I'm doing, um, I know I need to do stuff because I want to do pre-med. Okay. I'm going to actually get either med school or PA. I don't know yet. I'm still undecided. I have to, I have to see how long it'll take because I have to fix some of the grades from when I was younger sure, and I was dumb yes. and like didn't go to classes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so we'll that, see. But, but is that the uh, ultimate goal? You want to be a doctor? Yeah, I want to do sports physician. I really want to work in sports medicine. So okay. that's why I'm like, okay, at first I was like 18, but I was like, I'm at a place where I need to make more money. So I I want to stay in that realm. And I think physician, sports physician is the best way to go. And it's cool because like, you know, you already work in that sort of industry. Yeah. So it's, you already sort of know people. So sure. it's, you already have, you don't have an in, but you have a network already versus Absolutely. those people that are just getting out of school and having to figure it out. Like I have people I can turn to and be like, hey, do you know anybody in this area? Hey, like, you yeah. know, what would be the so it, it's been that's one of the blessings about what I want to do and what I'm doing right now. So 
you are a real life Wonder Woman. You realize that, right? <laughs> like you've become <laughs> the thing. <laughs> One day I'm gonna look back and I'll totally, I totally believe it. <laughs> when you, <laughs> but right when now you bring it, I'm like, yeah, okay. that's <laughs> fair. <Day at> time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you. let's, yeah, I mean it. Okay, let's go back to fighting though. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay, here's what I want to know. Did you have any fights before you became a professional fighter? I had one amateur MMA fight. My second one was supposed to be an amateur, and then they ended up um, making it a pro fight, um, sort of in the middle there. And like I knew, but I didn't know at first. And so, like I just knew what I was. I was signing papers, and I didn't realize what I. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize oh, no. everything. But you know, I was like, it was. It made more sense once I talked to my coach and we were closer to the day uh, when I was actually like realizing what I was like putting I was like okay it makes sense the age that I'm at like I I totally understand we want to sort of streamline and get where I'm going because I don't have as much time as the kids that are coming in that are 20 years old because right. I started when I was 30 right so I was like I, I gotta make it faster and I was I had already I was already a purple belt in jiu-jitsu so it wasn't like I was brand new and I didn't know anything by the right. time I got to I think my third fight I was already a black belt third or fourth fight in MMA I was already black belt now I mean more unofficial unofficial like school oh. shit uh like when I was younger yeah I had a I had a couple of those <laughs> and it was only because I was always one of those that I got along more with the boys and I like to rough house and I always I was I mean I have an older brother uh, most of my cousins are boys Usually the younger ones than me are girls, so I grew up around nothing but men. I feel like <laughs> sometimes even in jujitsu, the girls will tell me like, "You act totally like a guy." <laughs> 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 uh, my personality is just more that way. Like I don't care about getting dirty. I don't care if my hair's getting pulled. I don't care if I'm getting cut up. I don't care about the blood. I mean, obviously, if you yeah. if you follow me on fighting, that's like my favorite part is like <laughs> the the blood <laughs> the bloodiness of it, <laughs> and so. I've always been that type that sort of hung out more with the guys, so I didn't have as many issues, but okay. there, there was some when I was growing up, and it was usually those girls that I would be like, okay, let's be friends with this one now, and then they would get mad because I was friends with the boy that they liked, and then uh, they would get jealous, and so, yeah, they, okay. those were the fights that I had. <laughs> <laughs> I had two in high school, and then I had two when I was in middle school, and I had... Um, my mom lives in Wisconsin, and I um, I, I grew up in California. I oh, okay. moved with her for a little bit when my mom and dad split, and then I yeah. came back with my dad because I couldn't do it with her. Um, she's a little too <laughs> – she was a little too much for me. Fair. So, I get so, it. Uh, yeah, so I was like, okay. So coming out here, I was like I had to do everything all over again and trying to make friends. It, it was hard, and that's where I got into my little troubles. Uh, when I was older, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> I had my kids already. I was like, okay, I got to be mom. Time yeah. to grow up. That's fair. Now, would you say that the bare knuckle community or where you train, is there a real kindred spirit in the sisterhood of fighters? Or would you say it's more competitive? Um, well, so the girls, I mean, you're not going to talk. They do sometimes, but you tend yeah. to not want to talk to people because there's only um, that are in the same realm of your weight because there's only one true weight class we are starting to do 115 which is what i um sort of am supposed to stay in is the straw weight division but i still will fight for both because their main one is flight weight which is the 125 girls okay and so if you start getting friendly with them you're more than likely going to fight them because there's not that many of us but okay. they do a lot of us follow each other like on instagram <laughs> and stuff like that i'm like i don't for me I don't care what they do, so I don't do it to spy on anybody. I do yeah. it more because I think it's cool because we, you know, for me, I'm the type of girl that's like, I want to see everyone do good. Unless you sure. fight against me, I want to win. Yeah. <laughs> but it's I want business. everybody to win, right? Yeah. No, I think that's good. I, it, it's, it's interesting because with professional wrestling, um, you know, everything's already laid out and it's mm -hmm. scripted and we've trained together for years. So a lot of us are really close. And being that we're really close, we probably hit each other a lot harder because we're friends yeah. and it's kind of like, hey, hey, hey. But yeah. it's, <laughs> that's it's how it very, is in training. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's what you guys do at sparring. So you are, yes. you do yes. have your friendships. Like you're not yes. totally. Yeah, so, like, you'll hang out with, like, the MMA girls or the people you train with. Um, bare knuckle girls, like, you – one, we're a little bit farther apart. Most of those girls oh, are going to okay. be in um, 
in Florida, and since I'm in Cali, I'm a Cali girl. There's not that many out here. Okay. Um, I think we had maybe two girls from California, and we're not mm. close. Okay. Actually, there might be three now, but we're not close to each other. So it's like one of those things where you'll talk every once in a while. So, but the MMA girls, totally. I was always, you see it all the time. You'll see people fight people that they train with or um, people that they, you know, were friends with. Uh, it happens all the time. <laughs> okay, cool. Now, uh, when you first started coming up into fighting, was there any like fight movies that you found inspiring? <laughs> I love so I so I'm horrible because I'll remember movies, but I love watching fight movies. Like I yeah. liked watching like the Sylvester Stallone. I like watching Creed. I like watching like nice. you know all. I love Rocky. Um, <laughs> and then you have oh my god, I can't. I, I was wearing Bloodsport. Bloodsport, Bloodsport. Was another big one. That one yep. you see that all the time because it was <laughs> my. <laughs> so my grandparents um, on my mom's side, they were huge into like. AMC, American movie class or Turner classic movies, TCM. Okay. Yeah. And so I used to always watch the older movies when we were growing up. And every once in a while, they play like those movies on there. Um, so we would watch them on the weekend. And then, then Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon. <laughs> oh, so you, you're you a big fight movie buff. That was an easy yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> There's some good ones out there. There are. <laughs> uh, now, what is your pre fight ritual? What do you typically do? Do you listen to music? Do you zen out? What do you do? I try, so I'm like one of those that stay super busy and try to stay super busy until like the day of my fight. Oh, then I'll start okay. trying to zone out. Like, like for me, I look at it as it's another really hard sparring match. And I'm actually very calm going in. I oh. sometimes get a little worried that I don't have that many nerves going in. I'm usually okay. not nervous at all. Um, especially my last fight, I was like, what is wrong? I was thinking, what is wrong with me? <laughs> like, why am I not nervous? Should I be worried that I'm not nervous? But I just, I'm totally like peaceful. I'll let people talk to me. I'll talk to them. I'd rather, I listen to music, but usually I'm talking to my coaches and then obviously you, um, do a little bit of the warm up, but I'm yeah. at a point where I'm like, I don't need like huge warm up. I just need to be warm because I don't like to be too warm where my body feels already like I've been starting that, you know, that fight. Sure. So I just want to be a little warm and then I just want to be loose and like already talking and like going out, like on that walk, I'm already in my head. Like I'm about to fuck this bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. Oh, I love <laughs> I feel that. No nerves. I'm totally, totally calm. See, to me, that's way scarier. Like yeah. as an opponent, like you know if you're like fiery and a bundle of nerves it's like well i can probably catch you with your guard down but if you're like zen and in it and like a ninja like that's way scarier yes. like, good for you <laughs> I'm all, and I, i'm able to still think and i feel like i'm yeah. more connected <laughs> oh i love that so what about post fight because you never i guess you, you don't know going in what's going to happen you don't yeah. know what kind of injuries you're going to come out do you have like a post fight like debrief or like what's how does it go because it's so different with professional wrestling like we get back and we blah. well with bkfc the hard part with bkfc is that um literally in the morning like you fight you get back at like maybe one two o'clock in the morning you get back to your hotel room and then you have to get up at like five six and get on the on the uh, on the bus to give to the plane oh. yeah it sort of sucks in that regards so you don't get too much but usually it's um You'll go get some drinks, and it depends on where you're at. If you're in Florida, things are open a little bit later. But, like, when I was in Kansas, everything yeah. was already closed. Oh, <laughs> it was shit. like we had, like, 20 minutes to grab a drink. <laughs> so usually it's something like you want to get a drink and at least celebrate. But yeah. we're usually pretty bruised. So I'm always with, like, the – I have the gel packs, those little beaded gel packs. Oh, That's yeah. everywhere. And I usually can't <laughs> sleep anyways. My adrenaline's still pumping. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we always got stitches, like – with BKFC that you're always guaranteed you're going to get cuts really? <laughs> almost always you will not get out without at least getting a couple stitches what foundation are you wearing because your yeah. skin is buttery from here <laughs> <laughs> I, I used so being in uh, 
kinesiology, I actually know how to like um, use the tools to try to get rid of scar tissue and stuff like that. Oh. So I use a lot of that stuff. But I honestly, it's Revlon. <laughs> it's like Revlon, and I literally wear that or Maybelline. It's like the twenty-four hour matte foundation. That's yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> and that that fills it in. Damn. <laughs> and I drink lots of water. I don't drink. I literally I don't drink any soda. I, the worst thing I drink is iced tea. Okay. And it's only like once or twice a day. So I think the ha- drinking lots of water and then that, that healthier diet sort of already makes your skin nice and glowy and fresh. So that helps. <laughs> Good for you. I don't have all that nastiness clogged in my blood. <laughs> I can have everything. Oh, no. Good for you. No, it's working. I, do you ever get worried about that? Like, do you ever worry about breaking your nose or face stitches? Or I've just... broken my nose twice already. <laughs> really? I was like, I really don't care. I don't care. I, I totally don't. I was like, it's part of the game. I knew what I was going into. And that's actually my favorite part. Like jujitsu, I loved coming home with all the bruises on the on the legs. I'm like, those are my war scars. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> my battle scars. <laughs> oh my god! I like that. I love that part of it. I was you like, are. obviously, you want to take less less damage, but my last fight, the the one of the corner people were like trying to wipe off the blood at the end. I was like, no, and he's like, no, you need to wipe it off because the judges can't see. He told me afterwards because if they watch that and they see that because we're scored on damage, oh, they're going to give them more points because of the damage, even if it's one little cut, especially me because I drink so much water. It, I bleed a lot. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so they're like, wipe it off, wipe it off. Like, I want them on, though. I like the blood. You're an animal. Jesus. <laughs> the one fight, so when I did Kansas, I kept taking my blood and putting it under my eyes. And people were like, she's licking her butt. I was like, no, I was literally making my little war, like, my war makeup. Um, but they kept wiping it off. And I would turn and I'd be like, why can't you leave it on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the the um, cut man was like, no. That's like, hilarious. No. <laughs> like, it's you're, cool. You're like a savage. <laughs> Don't make me bleed my own blood. Yes. <laughs> no, no, all I need is the carry blood, and then I'm good. No. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Now, did you grow up watching professional wrestling at all? I watched it a little bit. So yeah. I watched it when um, it was always WWE. or I think back then, too, we had WCW. So it yep. was always like Sarah McMahon and uh, Triple H and Stone Cold. And I just saw, uh, was it Stone Cold? One of them, who was it that just got inducted? One of them just recently. Obviously, Stone Cold came out on the on the matches. But I can't yes. remember if it was him or... I can't um, remember either. It was I can't remember. Oh, like, oh, you're, you're, you're on the ball. That's great. <laughs> I love I love that um, I used to watch it all the time. And that was one of the things um, that I even told one of my agents. I was like, I love doing that stuff. That would be fun because it. I mean, I know it's scripted. It's not the yeah. same, but it's like one of those things. You're still you're still active and you're still doing stuff. And it, yeah, you have these lines and roles that you have to play, but it's still um, you know physical activity totally. and it's still fun. Like when we're little, we like to play fights. So why yeah. not? <laughs> Well, Why not bring back that childhood spirit? Exactly. <laughs> and that was my next question because there's been a lot of crossover uh, through the years with like the Ken Shamrocks and the Ronda, Ronda Rouseys. How do you feel about the crossover for professional wrestling? Like, is that something you would really consider if it got thrown your way? Oh, yeah. I, I love it. So I see it lucrative for most people that are go that go that way, too, because you only have the feeling. Yeah. So it's not it's sort of the same with the other way around. Um Oh, my, I can't even think of his name now. Brock Lesnar. Yes. Like when Brock Lesnar came, right? He already had that huge following when he totally. came into MMA, you know? Usually it's the other way around. Most of the MMA fighters are getting into the wrestling. Yeah. But you already have that going in, which makes it easier to get to where you want to go. And then on top of that, it's like you already have a little bit. Obviously, you're not really going to punch somebody. You're not really going to, like, you, like you're doing takedowns, but it's not like where you're trying to hurt somebody. Right. You just want to make it look like it. But yeah. it's like you already have a little bit of experience, so yeah. it also makes it easier to get into and to get into care. And I think it gets to be a little more fun because your personality shows way more. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you can have fun. Um, you can have fun with that stuff, too. Sounds like you get a little bit of that in you. Like, oh, yeah. Because I feel like we have to be so – I mean, you don't have to be, but I think a lot of times us fighters are a little more serious and come off that way. Yeah. So it's fun when you get to have uh, – get other people get to see that other side of you. Like, yeah. it feels more – 
Because, I mean, we're true and authentic, but it feels even more because they get to see a lot more of it because it's yeah. watching like an hour long or an hour and a half long program on it, right? So It's a male like, soap like, opera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun. Well, let's do a pro wrestling pop quiz. Okay. <laughs> do you know what a bump is? Um, is Probably not. <laughs> is, that, is that where they, is that the one where they actually like act like they're actually doing, they like bump up? Close. Like, so a, we call a bump every time you do like a break fall. Okay. Every time you smack the mat, we call it a bump. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, do you know what a clothesline is? Yes. It's it's where you bring the arm in to the neck and you drop it. <laughs> yes, girl. Like running into a clothesline. Yes, yes. Can you name three professional wrestler females? Okay, Sarah McMahon, um, Stephanie, God, what was her name? Oh, my God. I know the old ones. China. Uh, yep. But what the heck was Stephanie's last name? Ste I think you're thinking yes. Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie, oh, McMahon? Stephanie McMahon. Not Sarah. Yep. Yeah, you're right. That's Stephanie okay. Stephanie. That's okay. Um, and then there was another blonde one. She was on uh, George Lopez. What the hell was her name? She's a little crazy, too. <laughs> We're just uh, talking about Rogan. There is Sable. Stacy Stacy Keebler. Keebler. Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, she went the Hollywood route because she was like, yes. stunning. Yeah. yeah. She was yeah. too pretty for wrestling. <laughs> I think there's a lot of pretty girls in there, wrestling. Oh, I'm totally I think kidding. there's a lot of very pretty girls. And I, sometimes I'm like, uh, you know, the makeup is needed for yeah. for the camera and everything. But they're really pretty without it. So. Oh, yeah. No, no. There's a lot of really beautiful women oh, yeah. in both sports, I would say. <laughs> uh, how long, on average, do you think it takes a female professional wrestler to get ready pre-fight? Hair, makeup, costumes, if you could guess. I would say at least an hour and a half to two hours because I've had to have makeup and hair done for photo shoots and you're like thinking it's going to, no, it's at least an hour and a half to two hours. I would think it'd be the same setup. The clothes would be another route because I don't know how hard it is to put on some of those clothes. <laughs> There's a lot of tape, a lot yeah, of double-sided yeah. tape. No, you're right though. I would say on average three hours. Yeah. Yeah, I was yes. like, that was conservative because that's usually just for hair and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> well, because Last... I see some of those things are like very beaded and they look like, oh, very yeah. tight. And I'm like, to have to put that on and then you have the other things over. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm it's, sure that's it a team all its own. <laughs> I don't know why I do it. Hey, but it's fun. <laughs> now, it's fun. is professional wrestling fake? To an extent, because you got both. You still have to learn the moves. You're still doing the moves, but obviously you're not 100% putting them on the person. You still have to do, yes. still have to lift the people up. Obviously the person is going to help you. You still have to like drop them. You still have to do the clothesline. You still are getting dropped <laughs> off the tax. You're still bleeding. <laughs> it's true. No, they, had, they just showed it the other day. One of the guys, I think he was a triple H who got hurt falling yeah. off the thing not too long ago yeah where he went to the table yeah and he had to he had to fake it all the way through yeah yeah there's a lot of real injuries that come along with it and you just like you mm -hmm. said you gotta power through yep so last question now like you said you'd like to show your real personality uh and who you are what is something that maybe our listeners and your fans wouldn't know about you that you know they couldn't just google on social media what's like or like a misconception something you could like give a fun fact about you i think the biggest thing is um obviously the way I look is 100 percent not the person i am like i i like I like being pretty. I like picking myself up. I feel like that's just important to me because I feel like it's one of those things where you got to start your day right. You're going to start it how you feel the best, and I yeah. feel the best this way. But that doesn't mean that I'm this girl that wants to go and, you know, go to – like, I'm not a Hollywood girl that wants to be walking around with, like, a dog in my bag or something like that. <laughs> I like to get dirty. I like to, like – Everything I like about me is physically active. I, I love doing that stuff. Obviously, I'm 100% have no time for anything because <laughs> I'm all about my kids and my school, and that's pretty much it. But, like, I just really feel like uh, the way I look is not who I am. I like, I like having fun. <laughs> I think that's really powerful because – the world of MMA and UFC and now bare knuckle has always kind of been these rough and tumble girls who are tomboys. And that's fine because 
there is that, of course. But I feel like you are being completely authentic to who you are. And like you said, just because you put on makeup doesn't make you a less than fighter. It just means you are a woman, a femme yeah. woman, and you can hang with the best of them. You've proven that over and over. So you're expanding the world for other women that maybe can relate to you better. Yeah, I love it how now before it was more like, oh, these girls look like men. And now it's like, oh, this girl looks, you know, look at her. She's going to be too worried about breaking her face. She's gonna be... No, <laughs> no, no. Not the, I th most people who follow me already know that's not who I am. And they like watching me because they know they're going to get a fun fight. They're going to yeah. have what they paid for just for the one because it's only four ninety nine for the app. Um, and if anybody wants to download the app to watch my fights, make sure you use the link in my bio. There you go. <laughs> I put that out there. <laughs> um, but so they get their money's worth watching that fight. But I think a lot of times they see some of these girls and like, oh, she's going to get an easy fight or she's going to get this. Because there are, it's happened in the past and not necessarily with BKFC, but that's 100% like not the case at all. Like we get tough fights. Um, we, we're going to get something that's hard and it, you're going to have fun watching it no matter what. <laughs> yes, girl. Well, where can our listeners find you on social media? I'll link everything at the bottom in the description, but just for people who want to hear it now. So um, I have a TikTok, but I'm hardly on there. I'm been money on <laughs> more, but um, my TikTok is going to be BKFC Sweetheart. Um, I have my Instagram, uh, sorry, in Instagram and TikTok are Shreesa underscore Sweetheart. BKFC Sweetheart is Twitter. Um, so I will do this. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you so much again. This was so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess you can judge a book by its cover because Teresa lives up to her name. She is a total down to earth sweetheart and what an incredible woman. I mean, she's doing her undergrad degree in kinesiology, hoping to go pre-med and become a doctor while being a single mom of three and a top tiered respected fighter in the fastest growing professional sport bare knuckle fighting it's so new they're literally coming up with their fan base and the rules as we speak but it is the fastest growing fight sport in the world today so i hope you like everything that wild on is bringing you weekly of course our heart lies in professional wrestling but it also lies with female fighters if you like the content drop me a line a dm on instagram or twitter at Real Taylor Wild, that's wild with an E. And until next week, stay calm and wild on. <laughs>